This is Vikram Singh for the New York Times. Bamiyan province is the only place in Afghanistan that is actively promoting adventure tourism. Now, paragliding with skis is just one way to see the landscape. I guess there are not set that many places left in the world that, have, that are so unexplored. I mean, that's the other side of the medal of 30 years of war, that uh, just nobody came here the last 30 years. So you have it all for yourself. You're the first one on the slope every day because there's so much... There are so many mountains nobody has ever climbed before. You can even name them if you're tough enough to go up there. Spirits are high on an early March morning at the start of the third annual Afghan Ski Challenge. The race is held in the Shahidan Valley, 18 miles from Bamiyan, an area that is perhaps best known after the Taliban destroyed the ancient giant Buddha statues here in 2001. But as some of the local skiers are keen to point out, things have changed quite a bit. Bamiyan's very different now. We didn't have any schools at the time of the Taliban, but now we study, go to class, and look, we even ski. Even though some progress has visibly been made over the last decade, doubts still linger about whether it'll be sustainable as most foreign troops leave the country at the end of 2014. I've grown up with all the improvements that were made in the last 10 years. We had some real development, especially when it comes to education and cultural activities. But the fear is still there that the dark time of Taliban will come again. We request our government authorities and international forces to prevent the dark time from repeating itself. It's a concern voiced by many skiers here today, but for the moment they've got the more pressing matter of the race to take care of. The final pieces of equipment are brought in on donkey back and finally... The 30 competitors include 14 from outside Afghanistan. Their first challenge is to get uphill. There are no ski lifts here. The Afghan skiers may not be as well equipped as their foreign counterparts, but they are better prepared for the conditions and soon take the lead. Many of the 200 or so local residents watching, like taxi driver Habibullah, are also familiar with these mountains. Even on this sunny morning, the slopes bring back memories of a more troubled time when the residents of Bamiyan were brutally persecuted by the Taliban. The snow is a witness to a lot of things. I remember once my entire village was traveling through the snow. It was the dark time of the Taliban and we were escaping them through these mountains. We stayed for one night over there, on that hill. We lost eight kids that night. That time has passed. And this time will pass too, but it's better if the international forces stay. Habiba Sarobi, Afghanistan's only female governor, is also among the audience. It will be, I mean, a challenge if uh, the, uh, the security will be inter deteriorated in the other part of the country. But uh, I do have this hope that the, uh, first the international community not uh, leave us alone totally. The, a part of that will be remain here. And so they will help us. And we do have uh, the, the uh, support of international community with us. As the first competitors begin making their downward descents, the spectators turn their attention back to the race. Not everyone clears the jump at the end successfully, but a local ski guide called Sajid Hussain wins the race in 28 minutes. The other podium places are also claimed by Afghans, a sliver of good news in an increasingly troubled province. Bamiyan has been known as the safest place in Afghanistan, but there have been recent Taliban attacks on civilians and international troops, and it worries locals here. Abdul Khaliq's guest house is located in the shadows of the larger of the two destroyed Buddhas, considered a UNICEF World Heritage Site. Visitors have been scarce since he opened a year ago. The way I see it, the presence of coalition forces is necessary for us. As you know, jihadi forces are still powerful, and so are the Taliban. The people who invest their money in tourism and on foreigners are the ones that are worried the most. Even our lives are in danger. We might even get in trouble for working with foreigners, and the Taliban will ask us why we worked with foreigners. That's a big worry for me and other people around me. Even right now, we are really worried when we are traveling by road from Bamiyan to Kabul, that if someone recognizes us or informs the Taliban, they will catch and kill us.
Securing the roads is just one of the many challenges facing the local administration. Bamiyan is one of Afghanistan's poorest provinces, handicapped by a severe winter that limits farmers to a single growing season. Many, like former teacher Mohammad Hussein, lost what little they had under the Taliban and are wary about what the future might hold. Eventually, foreign troops have to leave the country, and once they do, there will naturally be some economic troubles. A lot of people in Afghanistan are worried about that. We're worried that there might not be enough jobs once the foreign troops leave, because they are creating so many of them. Some people will definitely lose their jobs. So in addition to other threats, there's also a sense of economic danger. While fears persist as coalition troops prepare to leave Bamiyan, at the very least, there's still some spring skiing to enjoy.